Welcome to another allotment diary. Today we are not down the allotment, we are at the uh, walking greenhouse. We will get down the allotment soon. Unfortunately, our August has been rather bad, which means we've had some dreadful weather and uh, quite cold conditions, which has meant it's been very, very difficult to, uh, to, to get there. Now, you can see here my cucumelons are, are really suffering. They've, uh, they've struggled, I think, with the cold weather, and you can see there's quite a few quite a few fallen here. Um, they've really, really found it unpleasant with the cold weather. I mean, it hasn't even been that cold, um, but it's gone down to you know, just a few degrees above freezing at night, and that, I think that's, uh, that's been enough to make them quite unhappy. And you can see they've, they've died back. So what I did is I evicted a couple of tomato plants that were quite slow from the greenhouse, and um, Let's just move back a bit. What I've done instead is I put the cucumelons in there to keep them warm. They've uh, definitely preferred it. I'm just hoping I can just give them a bit of water. Just hoping that I can uh, cheer them up a little, get them to come back to life properly, so I can enjoy enjoy them next year. Because of course you can overwinter these. These um, these plants will survive over the winter. Now let's try and get inside. Right, inside you can see we have all sorts of goodies. They're tomatoes. There you are, look at that. Oh, let's just pinch that off. Lovely looking tomato there. There's a bit of um, damage around there from infrequent watering, I believe. That's uh, my fault. Um, there's another one here. Let's try to see if we can get that out. There you are, we've got another nice one there, so let's put that up there now. At the back here I can see some of these leaves are starting to go a bit funny and there's debris dropping on the ground. So we try and keep um, leaf debris down. Let me just see if I can get this leaf from over here off. Oh. Oh. You can see in the back here we've got some leaves like this that are dying off on the tomatoes. Let's just fling that over there. This is um, because the air circulation isn't particularly brilliant in here obviously. It's, uh, oh, there's a baby snail. That can go. Um, obviously the air circulation isn't brilliant in here and it is affecting the tomatoes. So I have to keep opening the greenhouse up on the warmer days, just letting the air in. And what I do is, you can see again, that was starting to yellow a little. So I just pinch off the bottom leaves of the tomato plants and that seems to really just help them out. Let's throw those over there. That just seems to help keep them okay. Um, size shoots, they've been going absolutely crazy with. Um, they've, they've produced so many. I mean, you can see the height of some of these. Uh, let's just pinch the top top off that one. And there's a side shoot there. And there's a side shoot there. There's another side shoot there. They're absolutely everywhere, the side shoots. But I've been trying to keep on top of them and uh, get them under control because, obviously, you, you know, the more time it's spending on its side shoots, the less time it's spending producing tomatoes. And... Uh, there's one of the cats coming to check out the greenhouse because, of course, they don't normally come in here. So now it's open, it's, uh, it's, everyone's curious and they want to see what's happening. There's another leaf that's uh, quite eaten. Right. Now, up the top here, you can see that's looking a bit... Oh, off you go. Let's get rid of the cat. Um, you can see the pepper here. Oh, look, there's a slug over there. Slugs have been terrible in here. They've managed to get in. Uh, there's a there's a slug. So fling that away. Um, but you can see there's a decent pepper there. Some some quite nice ones in there that are doing all right. So they can come off fairly soon. Then over here we have another giant slug. Uh, unfortunately, I'm I'm not going to pick that one up. So if I don't break my neck on my watering can, let's just get one of my tomato leaves. I don't know whether that's one of these leopard slugs I hear about that eat other slugs. Um, I have heard of them, but whatever it is, it's uh, going over there because frankly I don't want it in my greenhouse. I'm not entirely sure what it is. But you can see we've got some aubergines there, or eggplants if we're 
uh, in the USA. There's some more over here, and you can see the damage. Look, there's another snail. I'm coming in here every night, removing these things. That's that gone. And they're still destroying everything. I mean, look, that's perfectly good aubergine. It's ruined. There's a baby snail there. Um, uh, there's a little one. Absolutely everywhere, these things. It's It's been quite soul destroying. I'll, I'll be really honest with you. I know I'm not the only one that feels this way. Um, everyone I know has had terrible problems with slugs and snails over this year. And it really has been... Um, depressing to be honest with you I mean that's gonna have to come off because it's just too ruined uh, oh, let's get me scissors again let's get me now you can see it's a good color it's a nice color uh, nice shape but look it's been it, it's uh, been eaten completely by these things. That's a real, real shame. Um, I could probably cut around it and use it, but it's not going to grow much bigger without uh, uh, without getting some serious damage to it. Um, this other pepper plant, that, again, doing fantastically well, but look at that. Oh, look at that. Been eaten again. So it's quite hard to get you some of the views here because uh, my greenhouse is quite full. Ah, uh, look, there's another one. Another slug. Hiding on the behind the pepper, they're very good at hiding, um, and they are literally everywhere. You have to go through your plants with a fine tooth comb and uh, searching for them. But this is the first time I've ever actually managed to get ripe peppers off a plant, so I'm actually quite pleased. But I'd be more pleased if it wasn't for these slugs because uh, there's another one there, they've chewed up that and they've ruined that one as well. So, Oh, that's just such a shame that. But I can cut around it and use it. That's what we gardeners do, isn't it? So, um, over here, we've got my blueberry plants. These are uh, these are going to go in the ground over the autumn, somewhere. Um, so they need a bit of a, a water. These are the Chilean guavas, and again, more snails. Things are everywhere. They need a bit of a water as well. Um, but despite all the, all the rain, the rain's done well for the plants. But I think part of the big problem we've had is is the fact that it's been so wet that the the slugs and snails just filled us up. The slugs and snails have really had a free rain and. I know everyone I've spoken to have said they have been so destructive this year and people have lost huge, huge crops. I mean, the other thing, I don't know if you can see that fellow in the middle there. There he is. Spiders, they're everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. And the giant, again, don't know whether it's just me, but uh, I understand they do something useful for nature, but I just wish they weren't in my, in my greenhouse because uh, I really don't like them. But they are everywhere. The lavender plants there, you can see, if you remember these, these have grown up over the last year from tiny little plug plants. So next year they should be ready to be planted out. The unfortunate thing for these is that they get uh, kicked around by the cats. My lovely cats uh, decide that they're going to run around and uh, these are one of the casualties. They keep getting knocked over. So I can't wait to get those down to the allotment and uh, out the way. Oops, there's a cucumber and I've trodden on. Um, so you can see there's, there is some very good progress in here. And there's some great stuff coming up, but it's a constant fight. Uh, I mean, look, that, uh, that's a nice size, that one. It's coming up nicely and there's more flowers forming. So these are doing really, really well in here. They're appreciating the heat. And I can see how much it's benefiting them. Um, but keeping the tomatoes under control because they've got a little bit of heat, it's an absolute nightmare, so just pull the ends off those, and then hopefully... Oop, what's that calling? Oh no, it's nothing calling on me, so we're okay there. So it's been a bit of a, a, bit of a nightmare, there's a couple more tomatoes there that are going to be ready soon. Now over here, we have a, a plum variety tomato, now unfortunately, these, I've been unable to support them, 
um, properly because they're just in the grow bag and uh, they've fallen over which means we're getting quite a bit of damage on them. They are very nice tomatoes but unfortunately not very good. Um, there are some more in there and again they, they need the water. These, for some reason, these haven't thrown off as many side shoots. I don't know whether it's because it's because they're not in the greenhouse, so it's a bit cooler for them. Um, but they're, they're not producing as many side shoots, which, which is good. But in a way, it's a, it's a bit frustrating. So I'll just uh, give them a bit of a water. Because unfortunately, being in a grow bag, they obviously don't get, don't get much water coming their way. So uh, the stuff here is, is, is doing okay. Like I said, I, I think the, the cold weather over the last few weeks really hasn't helped. But in the last couple of days, it, it's picked up. I'm told the cold weather is because of Hurricane Bertha. It's uh, drawn down, uh, it's created an area of low pressure and drawn down cold weather from the Arctic and Scandinavia, which has obviously um, affected our ability to grow stuff. But having protected all this, uh, I mean, I've got a good, good crop of tomatoes in there. I know I'm late with them compared to many of you, but uh, they're, they're getting there nicely. And I've got some lovely peppers, which I, I think, to be fair, I'm going to take most of these off today and bring them in, and I'll uh, make something with them tonight. Um, they look like they're just about ready. And the, oh, these were yellow peppers, this one. I couldn't remember whether they were going to go red, so that one can come off as well tonight then. Um, take them off in a minute. But you can see it's all all looking nice. There's some lovely looking cucumelons on here. Um, my my niece is particularly fond of these. She's uh, apparently been badgering her mother to go around the supermarkets asking for them, and uh, of course the supermarkets don't have them. But um, the other thing here, this is um, parsley, and you can see uh, not parsley, sorry, um, basil, and you can see there it's. Uh, if, if only this was smell vision you'd really enjoy the smell of this. I love fresh parsley. Um, I love fresh basil. I like fresh parsley as well, but I particularly like fresh basil. I think it's uh, got such a good fragrance to it. Um, one thing you do need to do with basil is pick the flowers off it, because once it's flowered, the flavour does change. Um, just slightly, but it, it does change, and a lot of people that cook will tell you that uh, it's it's not quite the same. I don't think my palate is quite that well developed, so I can't really comment. But I think for a lot of people, it's uh, just a bit too different. But you can see, we're, we're doing well in here. Let's just pinch the tops off, off that and off that. They're growing wild. Um, more side shoots there. But you can see we've got some more tomatoes coming up in here. These are another Roma style. There's the uh, beefsteak ones coming up down here. Um, they're doing all right. And there's a lot of leaves that need to come off this plant, though. But, uh, oh, and there's another giant snail. That you can see there, they're yellowing. So what I tend to do is just remove them, and then I can... Uh, um, then it gives the plants a bit more time to concentrate. So let me just get that snail. Oh. Um, my mission with snails, is I don't like killing them directly, but uh, um, what I tend to do is I give them a fighting chance. I uh, give them a chance to to go into orbit, and I figure if they if they evolve wings, but you know, fair enough. That's fair. That they're they're allowed to survive. But uh, if they don't develop wings in in that time then it's uh, their problem. I don't like killing them directly though, but you know, I can't have them in the, in the garden destroying everything because they, they are so, so destructive. Um, and, you know, I, I know people this year that have lost entire rows of plants. You know, what one person I know planted uh, three or four lots of, of beans before he actually got a crop that survived because of these stupid... Uh, slugs and snails, they have caused everybody no end of problem this year. Let's just go in there, put some water in there. Now I'm pretty sure if I if I search down the back here I'd probably encounter some large slugs and snails 
but uh, the downside of going down the back here and looking for the large slugs and snails is I also know, because I spotted it the other day, there are some rather gigantic uh, spiders in there and as far as I'm concerned they can uh, they can get on with life and uh, I'll leave them to it because I don't really want to come uh, have to meet them. So, uh, we're just going to, what we're going to do is we're going to water all these. Now, anyone, we'll get down the allotment either later today or tomorrow. The weather has picked up a lot. Um, and I can show you my weeds. Because, as always, the weeds have done fantastically well. Um, we've had some wet weather. And then we've had some hot weather. And the weeds have gone, yay! And gone absolutely crazy. So, yet again, um, there's an allotment covered in weeds. And uh, it's it's not happy news. It's it's very 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 difficult. And I think there's a lot of people that this year in particular are sort of feeling the pressure, shall we say, and feeling a bit sad about the fact that they've had so many problems with everything. Really, it's been a it has been a difficult year for growing to be really truthful with you. I think we've all uh, all experienced problems. So, what we'll do is we'll get down the allotment, probably, as I said, probably later on today. Oh, there's another little snail, look, hiding on there. That can go, because they turn into big snails and they eat everything in sight. But I think what we can do is, if you are down your allotment, then there's a lot you can still plant. I know it's um, autumn's coming, but you can plant a lot of things to overwinter, like Japanese onions, they overwinter nicely. Uh, purple fire it's sprouting broccoli. There's versions of cauliflower, cabbage, there's overwintered peas and broad beans. Now, all of that can be planted down in the allotments right now. I know it's getting towards the end of the season, and you're probably thinking about putting your allotment to bed for for the winter. But you know, it can still be productive, you can still dig in your autumn potatoes, your winter potatoes, you get them in now, and they should be ready for Christmas. Um, you can also, of course, uh, get down the garden centre and go and buy all your seeds and everything for next year, because obviously a lot of them are reducing them right now to clear space ready for the winter stock. So there's actually a lot of really good bargains to be had in the stores right now if you get out there and go and have a look. So I can strongly recommend that. But like I said, it's uh, there's quite a lot to do down at your allotment at the moment. Um, and men, many people do feel that winter is a, uh, a dead time at the allotment, but it doesn't have to be. There, there is plenty you can do down there. So, you know, my recommendation to you, and just know I'm removing um, a lot of this leaf mould, or uh, bits of leaf off the floor here, because if I leave them there, then they are going to um, uh, encourage the pests I don't want. Oh, let's get that in there. There you are. And the final plant. As you can see, it is planted a bit close, but um, I keep opening the doors just to give them a bit of fresh air. Um, but like I said, there's, there's lots you can do down your allotment. Don't think that just because it's winter, uh, you have to stop doing anything at all. There's lots of things that overwinter. There's lots of things that uh, you can start doing and you can start stocking up ready for next year and get ready to really grow uh, a, a fantastic crop next year. So I'm gonna go in now. I'm gonna go and enjoy my tomatoes. I can see a cheese and tomato sandwich coming on. I'm gonna pick my peppers. Uh, I've got my scissors to snip them off. And I think, like I said, I'll leave the greenhouse open for a couple of hours. It's a warm day today. Let the um, air circulate for a bit, give the plants um, some fresh air, and then uh, I'll close it up this evening. But like I said, we'll get down the allotment later on, either today or tomorrow, and uh, we'll see what's going on down there. And uh, I'm sure it's all very exciting, and uh, I can't wait to eat these, so I'll talk to you very soon.